Yes, it's a carnival atmosphere, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, a carnival atmosphere in what is quintessentially a political rally. This is, uh, 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 you can see the BJP symbol in the, in the Prime Minister's hand. He wants uh, these people. Uh, pretty much everybody gathered there seems to already be a fan. Uh, and how many of them, of course, are voting for the BJP, we'll find out on, on, the, on the 4th. Let me quickly open this up because something, uh, something interesting is taking place as we speak. And uh, I'm trying to get reactions on to that. Uh, Joyita Basu joining us on the broadcast. Uh, Joyita, uh, in our entire adult careers, uh, Zafari Jalani, who unfortunately, of course, is no longer with us. Uh, he died last year. But from 1986, just after I was born, up until three years ago, the man ran the Babri Action Committee. That's all I knew him as. Zafari Jalani ran the Babri Action Committee. Iqbal Ansari. My entire formative journalism career was interview after interview on Ayodhya and Ayodhya and Babri Masjid and, and Ram Temple and why it should not be built and what was where and what happened in 1857 and what happened in 1869. Iqbal Ansari has just put a poster outside his house, Modi Ka Parivar. What do you make of this, Joyita? Well, I would say it's a huge change, you know. I mean, the thing is, I think finally he gave up in terms of understanding the mood of the country. You know, you cannot be seen to be swimming against the tide when the tide is towards... You see, what we are witnessing in Ayodhya, it is more than politics. It is about an outpouring of faith and belief in what... Uh, Ram Lalla means to this country what Ra Ra uh, Lord Ram means to this country. So you see, when there is such an outpouring of faith, outpouring of, uh, I, I would say, a belief, you know, fi when finally people are coming to, you know, and sh are confident enough to show to the world what uh, Lord Ram means to them, what uh, Sanatan Dharm means to them, there is no point, you know, trying to stand up and say that, oh, you guys are wrong. And this is where the politicians are getting it wrong. What uh, the, the Iqbal Ansari and all these people are realizing, have realized that, you know, what was hidden for all these years, all these centuries, in fact, I would say. Once this has happened, there is no point resisting it. Okay. You know, I would say Iqbal Ansari is smarter than people like, I would say, uh, Udayanidhi Stalin or the people in, uh, well, I can't even say Trinamool Congress because they are taking out uh, uh, Ram Navami rallies in Bengal. You know, so okay. All there right. is no point Okay, okay. Sense. Let me quickly get Sumit back in. Okay, Sumit. So now we are seeing you just got a got a whiff of it from Nikita. There, you're seeing it on your screens, uh, but it's nice to hear it also. It's a carnival atmosphere. This is not the inauguration of the Ram Temple. This is four months later, Narendra Modi campaigning for votes. It's a carnival atmosphere in unprecedented numbers. This will probably be one of the largest electoral rallies, road shows in number of people who attended uh, probably ever. Okay, we, we won't know the numbers, probably never know the numbers. But at this point of time, when, uh, you know, uh, people are out there, you know, shout, shouting Jai Shri Ram, shouting Narendra Modi, what's the messaging? Are people going to appreciate the carnival atmosphere or are people going to say, oh my God, this is exactly the problem. This is, this is uh, uh, Hinduism and politics getting mixed up. Uh, Rishab, in a country where we have at least 1.25 billion Hindus, and Hinduism and politics being as bad as synonyms are the two are the two sides of the same coin. It is the reality which people have to really to wake up, smell coffee, and realize because what Prime Minister Modi has done, it happened after five centuries. It was considered to be impossible. So people's love, emotion, and that wo jazbaat jo mat rahe hai, that, that passions are there. They love him. And the one thing I can tell you after after going to Ayodhya myself. It is not a North Temple, it is not a South Temple, it's not a East Temple, it's not a West Temple. This is Bharat ka mandir hai. You will see people from every each and every state are there and this one thing, every you might not know Hindi, you might not be able to speak a word of Hindi, but they only say Jai Shri Ram. I have seen everybody saying the Jai Shri Ram and that is what is resonating there. And this is what the people have to appreciate. It is not whether I like or not. It is not, you know, I like those people carrying a cross, I don't, I don't like these people wearing white dresses or not, that is what Christianity is. I, I may not like a person with a beard or wearing a, you know... A, okay, would it be okay, Sumit Peer, if there were 100,000 people gathered uh, shouting Allah Akbar? 
you know that if it happens somewhere in a country islamic country it happens all the time if you look at yemen syria and all it's a every day's business they even they talk of jihad all the time forget allah work but they talk of much more things but that is yemen and syria or whatever but this is bharat this is prime minister modi this is okay. ayodhya she russia i see it as the moment remember last elections when modi ji went to kedarnath he spent one night in that cave next day morning when we were debating on news he said this is going to have an impact on all of the elections this is that kedarnath moment I, Rishabh ji, look at the screens. Look at the people. This is that Kedarnath movement. This is going to send ripples across the whole UP. Not only whole UP, across the whole India, because the epicenter, the nerve center of Hindu Twa, Hinduism, and Bharat is Ayodhya now. Okay. So people okay. Have to okay. Let me just digest people. developments taking place because, like I said, this is an electoral rally. Uh, the prime minister's inauguration happened on January twenty second. This is uh, the well sitting PM, but more importantly, candidate uh, in Varanasi nearby. Uh, where he has uh, to file his nominations uh, and win the seat once again and he's of course hoping that he's winning uh, 60 70 80 or maybe all the seats out of up uh, for uh, the party to get that majority 300 plus which they would like to repeat in what happened in 2019 uh, major mohammad ali shah on the broadcast with us major shah you know go, thank you for coming back because uh, uh, something uh, momentous at least has happened uh, and let's digest it the man who was the main litigant the second generation litigant in the babri masjid ayodhya case has just put a poster outside his house we are expecting him to be meeting and greeting pm modi shortly he says i am modi ka parivar what do you make of this right rishab rishab as i mentioned earlier in the previous uh, telecast with you that you know the very fact that the ram mandir has come up in ayodhya the muslims have accepted it and they honor that there is no problem with that at all there is uh, in fact they joined in the celebration even in delhi in other places where they were not in ayodhya they joined in their neighbors in the celebrations of that that's not an issue at all and uh, see and when the prime minister came to power in 2014 for the first in the first term he had said sabko saath leke chalenge sabka saath sabka vishwas sabka you know so everybody was have faith in the prime minister he was and the muslim community no in 2002 when the godar riots took place when the when prime prime minister was the chief minister of gujarat because under his regime those riots had taken place so they were a bit upset with him at that time but over time the time he is a best healer all the when the wound of partition was forgotten of 947 okay. even this was forgotten they okay 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 major major shah for some people this will be a exemplar that yes in some cases sabka vishwas is slowly being won that does not mean necessarily that everybody becomes a voter for for the bharatiya janata party but in terms of equanimity and respect that that is being won others will say no this is a traitor to the cause he is uh, he is joined up with the hindu fundamentalists and and these and these hindu nationalists one second one second no i i haven't finished as yet so people they honor the prime minister he is a leader of a country there's no doubt about that and no you have any doubts about that but when the leader of the prime of the country when he, in the the speech he yes. made in rajasthan so which had upset some muslims in fact because, because i have never as a muslim i haven't seen any discrimination happening against me or against any of my muslim brothers sisters anywhere in the country i have seen equality i have seen justice i have seen uh, they in fact i have seen the uh, the other way around there's been no discrimination but that speech did upset muslims in fact so muslims kept quiet what see i know a lot of muslims who said they wanted to vote for the prime minister narendra modi this time because they all they, they didn't see communism they saw progress they said let's vote for a leader who would bring in development progress health care education living standards who would take the country to a global power they wanted that so the muslim what as to what i am analyzing now they will silently what though it would not matter to the bjp i i presume because bjp already has a large support and as the, the gathering in ayodhya right now can the writing on the wall is very clear no but it it, it will it will it but it will it will matter very dearly to akhilesh yadav it will matter who is uh, uh, who is hoping to win uh, the very neighboring uh, uh, town of uh, ayodhya which is in mainpuri uh, it will certainly matter to him it will certainly matter to mamta it will certainly matter to rahul it will certainly matter uh, to many others uh, ladies and gentlemen political polarization in the past has has benefited both sides okay so to say that the bjp doesn't uh, uh, and i think the is uh, uh, major shah is referring to i'm, I'm assuming the mangal sutra uh, uh, a speech uh, which uh, he says uh, was uh, uh, not in the best of taste and has uh, has been difficult to swallow uh, 
so political polarization cuts cuts both ways. Let me quickly get uh, get uh, Professor Nalapath and Sumit back in. P Professor Nalapath, now so now where's let's let's get into the politics of this. Where is this where is this heading? Are we seeing a, a momentum build up? Are we seeing a, a a point of inflection, a pivot point of a Rahul Gandhi not contesting from Amethi, but he'll go to Rai Bareilly of this rally in Ayodhya. Uh, the symbolism of an Iqbal Ansari saying, okay, I'm burying the hatchet beyond the courts as, as well. Are we seeing some momentum building or is it still uh, difficult to say what's going on? You, you see, Rishabh, well, what has been going on for several years is an effort to demonize the prime minister and basically misinterpret what he's saying. Now, uh, for example, CAA, it's actually a minorities protection bill for the countries of Bangladesh, Pakistan, and Afghanistan, where minorities are being very badly treated, Afghanistan and Pakistan especially. It was the CAA name was twisted to uh, imply falsely that it means that Muslims are going to lose their citizenship in India. And very many Muslims fell, fell for that. Now, this again, this particular remark of his, which is made in an election campaign, has been misinterpreted in a manner that is basically done to create a certain amount of unease and anger uh, in the Muslim community. Why? Mm -hmm. Because it is important that Prime Minister Modi, uh, you know, uh, basically they wanted to ensure that the minority vote bank that they've been depending on remains with them. I've seen this happen back in Gujarat, in Rajkot, when he fought the election for the first time and he became an MLA. Uh, my, uh, the, the people there said, more than 40% of the Muslim community in Rajkot voted for Narendra Modi. And then you have a situation which was made up following the very the great tragedy at Godhra. And, you know, and there I can tell you, I, having visited that state, I do not believe that the chief minister was complicit in that. It was a groundswell of emotion. And both communities were involved. About one third of the casualties were Muslim. Two thirds were Hindu. Roughly, I mean, you know, in terms of, uh, what do I say, the populations that were rioting. But having said that, there is a deliberate narrative that's on to defame the prime minister and to misinterpret what he okay. says, okay. including this particular thing. And that is going on because they want to continue the minorities as their vote bank. Okay. That Let... They have done nothing for the minorities. Okay. They okay. have not helped them educationally. They have not helped them socially. But they want their vote bank. And they're therefore demonizing the prime minister and misinterpreting his remarks. Okay, Ut Utpal call. Let's get into the politics of this because yes, this is it is political season. There's an election on. Okay, is this a factor now? Is this a factor playing in the favor of Narendra Modi, or have the opposition got their guns better sorted, their mandal, Muslim caste, mathematics better sorted because it has served them in the past? Uh, abortion has already lost. They have lost the game because whole of nation and a majority of people in India, including Hindus, Muslims, Christians, they understand now the opposition is playing a negative role. And they played this negative role right from 84, 85 when this uh, Ram Mandir agitation was going on. They thought it's a BJP thing, but it was the... Uh, whole of nation wanted Ram Mandir. And so this time the, uh, the procession which is going on uh, in Ayodhya is basically a first victory procession. It is not only a BJP rally. It is the rally of happiness. It is the rally of victory. And okay. that victory will turn into a big victory. Okay. Pivot points, ladies movie. and gentlemen, do Maybe happen. Before. In every battle that is fought, a pivot point... Uh, generally does happen, where uh, either it, it grinds to a halt or sometimes uh, it can turn into a rout. We don't know whether we are witnessing it right now. Uh, we'll have to come back in a month's time and re-examine these moments. But this is the present right now. This is where we are. This is where we stand. Uh, uh, and, and let me get Joyta into the politics of this. Joyta, what do, now, what do you now make of the politics of this? There's a, there's a large turnout. This is an election rally. This is not the Prime Minister going to inaugurate the Ram Temple uh, in his official capacity. This is candidate Modi, BJP leader Modi, uh, appealing for votes for the people on with the Ram Mandir. 
uh, in on, on on his back is it a vote appeal uh, is there a flavor ar around this that's more than just a groundswell well obviously i mean given it is election season i mean it, it's obvious you know i mean the, the very fact that he's holding up the bjp's uh, symbol and that itself is uh, says that it's an election rally so you see it's all it's politics the messaging is totally politics but the very fact that it is taking place in the uh, town or city of ayodhya the very fact that the temple was inaugurated two three months back and uh, so i mean you know it is kind of i mean as a politician if one is thinking about it it is and push towards resurrect to towards bringing out those emotions once again if you remember around uh, end of january when 22nd january the inauguration happened i mean the whole country was charged up i mean i think the what the prime minister is doing is uh, reminding the country of 22nd january if you are talking about it as a, a if is uh, i mean uh, approaching the matter as a uh, politician yes he is and why not given okay. that he is he is the man who has done it who has made it possible something that has not been possible for hundreds of years and he is reminding the people that don't forget it when you are going out to vote okay uh, now ladies and gentlemen you're seeing the, you're seeing non stop visuals coming uh, on 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 your screens uh, and uh, it's a 2 km road show that literally is going at snail pace uh, it's the largest rally we've seen so far uh, i i am not going to hazard a guess at the numbers okay because uh, that would be specious because there's no way for me to predict the numbers uh, the estimates from the ground i have suggested uh, that at the road show alone anywhere between 100000 150000 people not all of them are native ayodhya residents we've spoken to several who indeed are uh this is uh, not just about the ram temple the ayodhya's face is changed there there are 150000 people per day visiting the place you are seeing a yogi adityanath there who um, is no longer just the leader of amat he's been chief minister for north of a decade approaching a decade and a half who has uh, uh, delivered administration he would like to say to up not just his religious credentials all of these things add up Uh, to many many things and let's quickly open up this up uh, uh, further feroz bakht ahmed joining us on the broadcast as well uh, feroz ji now uh, for many people uh, your position on a lot of issues regarding narendra modi they would say that that's unpopular okay it's it's not in keeping with how muslims in this country should be thinking which is primarily to say that they should be against the bharatiya janata party the litigant of the babri masjid case has just put a poster outside his house with his own and he says he's modi ka parivar how do you respond sir okay i had gone to a couple of okay we can't hear you sir we'll we'll get your uh, we'll get your connection stabilized uh, very shortly let me get venkat narayan back into the politics of this what do you make of the politics of this uh, uh has it been as ayodhya just been digested uh, as a non issue none of the political leaders of the opposition other than arvind kejriwal and bhagwant man have found time in 3 and 1/2 months uh, to attend that's not just because modi was sitting there for 3 and 1/2 months that's a choice they've made they've not they've tried to downplay it as an issue is it an issue are we seeing it in in motion well it is you know after a thousand years of slavery hindus are feeling proud of being hindu and india being a hindu majority state and people who try to politicize it and uh, refrain from visiting uh, ayodhya it is uh, their problem and the results of the election will show uh, you know whether they are going to be voted back or you know uh, they'll be voted out or whatever but um, yes uh, it is a political uh, rally that's for sure Narendra Modi is the prime minister of India he is the one who made it happen and is making no bones about the fact that is canvassing for his party he is trying to come back uh, to a third consecutive five year term and uh, he is um, you know just because he happens to be the prime minister you cannot expect him not to yeah uh, just a minute campaign for his party Bump. so i think it's, I it's absolutely one? fine Yeah, go ahead, sir. We can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, Rishab. So, 
I have no doubt in my mind that, uh, you know, the, the fact that the Ayodhya temple has happened, the credit uh, legitimately goes to Narendra Modi for making it happen. Okay. And he is justifiably proud of it. And I think uh, the people of uh, uh, India okay. will... Okay, so will is, it, is it a pivotal voting issue or is it a polarizing issue? Let me quickly get Athar Zia joining us in the broadcast. Athar Zia, the Babri litigant... Uh, likely to be meeting the prime minister says he's Modi ka parivar puts a poster outside his door. What do you react? How? What do you react to this? You know, as the prime minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, we all are Modi's private uh, okay. parivar. I'm sorry to interrupt you, we, sir. I'm going to come to you in just a second. Uh, JPS Rathor joining us. He's in the UP cabinet as we speak, uh, Mr. Rathor. Uh, let me ask you specifically, sir, the Babri litigant Iqbal Ansari has put a poster outside his house. He says he's Modi ka parivar. What do you make of this? Look, today the whole country is Modi ka hai. Manya Pradhan Mantri Ji ne jis tarikhe se ek ek vyakti ke liye yojnaye banayi hain aur unhone jo shuru mein hi nara diya tha sabka saath, sabka vikas. Us mool mantra par chalte huye sabhi sarkari yojnaon ka lab अगर कोई पात्र व्यक्ति है उस तक पहुंचाने का काम प्रधानमंत्री माननीय नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने किया है और उसके साथ साथ सभी लोगों के लिए कभी कोई ऐसी घटना नहीं हुई जिसमें उन्होंने किसी के साथ भेदभाव किया हो और उस कारण पूरा देश आज मोदी जी के नीतियों से प्रभावित होकर जुड़ रहा है और मैं उनका भी बहुत बहुत अभिनंदन करता हूँ मोदी परिवार में जुड़ने के लिए अंसारी जी का और अभिनंदन करता हूं कि उन्होंने एक बहुत बड़ा संदेश देने का काम इस देश में राठौर जी क्या अभी भी आप मुस्लिमों का विश्वास जीतना चाहते हैं इलेक्शन अभी चल रहा है क्या अभी भी जीतना चाहते हैं आप देखिए मुस्लिमों का विश्वास जीते हुए हैं ये बहुत से विपक्षी दल के लोग उनको बरगलाने का काम कर रहे हैं उनको भटकाने का काम कर रहे हैं और जो अच्छे मुस्लिम सोच वाले मुस्लिम हैं जिनको समझ में आ गया कि मोदी जी सही काम कर रहे हैं वो सभी मुस्लिम मतदाता भारतीय जनता पार्टी के साथ हैं मोदी जी के साथ हैं मोदी जी को वोट कर रहे हैं मोदी जी ने जिस तरीके से ट्रिपल तलाक के लिए कानून बनाया है मुस्लिम बहन बेटियों के साथ उनके जीवन को सुरक्षा का कवच पहनाने का काम किया है बहुत सी हमारे मुस्लिम बेटियां बहने और माताएं Okay. Modi ji ke samarthan mein khadi hui hai. Okay, Rathor ji, ta, hum, saath jundne ke liye baad baad dhane baad. Let me go back straight back to Athar ji. Athar ji, sorry I interrupted you. Go ahead, sir. No problem, Rishab. Yeah, what, yeah, do, you, what do you make? Iqbal Ansari, sir. What do you, what do you make I, of what I, has just I happened? Said, as I said, since uh, Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji is the Prime Minister, Head of the State, so naturally we are, all are his family, his parivar, and it is his duty that to take care of every <laughs> Indian citizen. That's it. So, there he, he is having a political rally. He has all the right to do canvassing, to uh, do, I mean, uh, to tell his uh, people how, why should they vote or Mr. Modi. Okay, Adar Zia, so that's what he is, is are there some Muslims in this country who are saying, okay, my Vishwas is being won, even though it might be slowly, but my Vishwas is being won? You know, there are a lot of uh, irritants in between. And what I think that the democracy in India now should be mature enough that vote bank politics and religion and caste-based politics should be eliminated. And we have to be careful as a statesman, <clears throat> as a intellectual, and as a mm, uh, large-hearted people where humanity and nationalism prevails, okay. but not <coughs> uh, that kind of sloganering where I mean, we take the name of Muslims or some other caste or some other religion or region that should be avoided. Okay, all right. But but that's the exact, in fact, the entire campaign premise of the opposition, sir, is caste, quotas, minority, Muslim. That's all they're talking about. No, that's not good. That's not good. Whether it is a position or the ruling party, both should not do at all. Okay. At all. And you know, 
some fringe politicians down the level, they just see that the best way to come into the limelight or become a leader or get a vote bank, they just accuse somebody or other or just, uh, you know, malign other people in general. Okay. You cannot malign a general, uh, in general, any any community, any religion, any caste or anybody. Okay. At least now we should be mature, we are educated, we have a very good record of democracy. We are the largest democracy and we are so proud of it. Okay, all right. Okay, so uh, Sumit, okay, let's let's get into the into into the into the hard hardness of this. First, first phase, very quiet. Okay, we're talking about progress and Vikas and Modi guarantee and, and all the other things. Uh, it turned out that the turnout fell by six percent. Okay. And after that, the BJP, you know, dug up Manmohan Singh that he, 15 years ago, Manmohan Singh said, made this comment about uh, priority for Muslims to India's resources. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, he said that. He didn't say it once. He said it twice. He defended himself, explained himself. So, yes, he said it. But that was almost two decades ago. The BJP dug that out because they also want to see a little bit of polarization. Now, how do we then, how does the BJP digest these contradictory pulls and pushes. Rishabh ji, you know, what happened in the phase two is because, you know, it was all started by Rahul Gandhi. Rahul Gandhi talked about a financial survey. He talked about a distribution of the wealth. And usually, as concerned Hindus, as citizens of India, we are concerned. 1.25 billion Hindus are concerned. that is this going to happen? Because they are, there's something which Communist Party of China is also talking about. When with the Samoyu signed with China, we are concerned. So what do we look? We look to the tallest Hindu leader, we look to the Prime Minister of the country, sir, kindly address this issue. So what he said was in reaction to what Rahul Gandhi said. If Rahul Gandhi would have not started it, there was no need for the Honorable Prime Minister to reply to that. The problem is who talks of Jati Ganjana Every speech, Rahul Gandhi, who talks of financial survey, who talks of redistribution of wealth, it's Rahul Gandhi. Who talks about caste division within the Hindus, it's Rahul Gandhi. Who talks of division of wealth as per caste, it's Rahul Gandhi. Who talks about the... You know, in his manifesto that the Muslims need to get to get, get a right of wearing their own things. Who prioritizes hijab over kitab? It's Congress manifesto. Who talks of blatant Muslim appeasement? It is Congress manifesto. So when, when these dangerous things are being talked about, that you will come to my house and count my wealth and possibly to distribute it to somebody else, we are concerned. So we look to the Honorable Prime Minister to address this concern. Okay. So in addressing this concern, if somebody finds this communal, you can't you can't say, Rishabh ji, that the, uh, the concerns of 1.5 billion people are communal. Okay. This has to be spoken both sides to always. That. Both sides always benefit from polarization. Uh, let's not kid ourselves that the BJP doesn't do it. Yes, they do it. Uh, are we seeing a dramatic change? For absolutely sure, you are. Uh, fingers crossed uh, that this is uh, the kind of politics we can evolve ourselves into. That, there, that that elections, ladies and gentlemen, in Ayodhya to do a rally like this. I mean, just think about it. In in in. Kashmir and Srinagar in the Ghantagar to be celebrating New Year with your kids. I mean, may you know, may we have lived to see those days. Uh, this should have been a highly or could have been a highly charged, tense. What you're seeing is a carnival atmosphere. Imagine the stakes are so high. Literally, political careers and governance and who rules and who comes to power is at stake. This is the biggest mantle, and it's like a party is going on, okay? Uh, and if that is happening in the in the country, that's a happy situation. Uh, you can disagree with the politics of it. But uh, yes, it is the duty of, uh, of Narendra Modi uh, to be making greater efforts to be winning that Vishwas. Absolutely it is, because everybody then uh, is part of the of, of the Parivar. Let me get Utpal call back in. Utpal call, how is the politics of this playing out? Uh, I don't think it's the politics. Uh, but I tell you, for last 60 years, Congress has played biggest dirty role. They, they made Muslims to get afraid of uh, Hindus. They started such narrative that as if Hindus are enemies of Muslims. That was because they wanted to vote of Muslims. They wanted to concentrate Muslim vote. And that now they are trying again. Rahul Gandhi is trying that again. But the slogan which uh, Narendra Modi gave uh, that Sabka Vishwas, uh, Sabka Vikas, and I think that must be the slogan for whole of nation to go as far. Okay, okay. so there, as, as, yeah, there is altruism in that, Mr. Call, but then there is hard-nosed politics also, okay? Uh, uh, sabka Vishwas of, of a few people 
is a breakthrough, but it's not necessarily the be all and end all. Uh, Rishabh ji, I tell you, I talk to my friends in Kashmir and those who agree with me and those who disagree with me. But most of the people, majority of Kashmir appreciate what Narendra Modi has done in Kashmir. And everybody is happy that there is a peace, uh, there is a tourists can uh, go and uh, people are uh, walking in the streets at 9.30, 10.30 in the uh, evening, night. And so uh, they never believed that that, that will happen okay. because one generation, two generations had seen uh, chaos in Kashmir. Now the things are now only talking of people. Development, development, okay, you know, development. You know, we are, and we are, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we are being able to have, and I know because, mostly because the people who are sitting with me are reasonable people and, and I'm trying to be reasonable with them. Uh, so we are able to have reasonable power conversations. So let me get Major Shah back into this. Major Shah, the ability to have reasonable conversations, for example, you're saying that, look, uh, overall, uh, I'm not a buyer into a conspiracy theory of fear mongering. I have a, I have a in principle objection to this comment or that comment of this speech. But overall, I'm not jumping to conclusions and India is doing well. Uh, we've seen, uh, you know, one of the former J infamous JNU campaigners uh, praising what's happened in Kashmir. We've seen uh, Shah Faisal, who after he went to Harvard, uh, well, had some very strong opinion uh, on, on Kashmir, completely change his tune on, on, on what is taking place in terms of the stone pelting disappearing and the development taking place. Uh, is this bit by bit? some Vishwas being earned, at least in some quarters? Uh, Rishabh, there's no doubt about that fact that, you know, yes, a lot of Vishwas was most certainly earned. And that's why I said uh, there were a lot of Muslims who uh, who wanted to vote for BJP, in fact, who come forward and no one had told them. They didn't, no one had asked them to vote for us or, you know, or they were not doing a lot of fear or anything. It was totally their wish. But now I feel... They are those same people are going to be resenting after it could be uh, as Professor Manalapat said that people are trying to some people might, might the opposition might try to malign him by put by by uh, misconstruing his speech or whatever however it is but that has done some damage somewhere there so now they will not say anything they will not raise your voice quietly when the casting of vote is concerned they will quietly vote for elsewhere that's, okay. that's what uh, the, the thing that. Like. Okay, so we Parusha, are. But that will not bother BJP because already they are they are getting a whole lot of uh, the support is with them. The wave is certainly with them. We can see the live example in Ayodhya. And lastly, I'd like to conclude by saying that they are. Uh, if you ask the, the writing on the wall, writing on the wall is very clear actually for everyone. So, but being over ambitious could be a problem that no that's no that's fair enough that's fair enough i don't no no let's not let's not start start predicting numbers here uh, all what the hell let's predict numbers uh, you know uh, <laughs> i i love being in this chair because uh, it's uh, uh, it's somebody else's examination uh, it's nice to be nice to be a commentator in a cricket match uh, when somebody else is facing the heat on the pitch uh, so okay let me let me try to get feroz bakht ahmed if his connection is stabilized feroz ji what do you make ikbal ansari babri litigant two generations fought Babri Masjid Ayodhya case, he says he is Modi ka parivar. Your thoughts? All right, am I audible to you yes, now? Yes, yes, you are now. We can hear you much better. Go ahead. Thank you. Thanks, God. Now, you know, I was listening to all my learned colleagues, including you. Uh, it, it is very true that the entire India has become Modi ka parivar. And in fact, uh, uh, you know, there is no Hindu Muslim from the side of the governance because for the governance, it is Sabka Saat, Sabka Vikas, Sabka Vishwas, and Sabka. Everything is there, uh, you know, peaceful. And thanks for, let me tell you one more thing. I had visited Ayodhya a couple of years ago, and there's a sea change. It looks like some city in uh, Europe. It, it looks b better than uh, what Lucknow today is. So a lot of development has come. And if development will come, Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs, Christians, all will progress. One thing. Second thing is, uh, you see, as far as uh, Indian scenario is concerned, nobody should be considered uh, untouchable. You know, Muslims should vote all the parties. I, I mean, uh, BJP should not be considered as untouchable. You may or may not vote BJP or Congress. A good candidate is there. Now, thanks, uh, uh, thanks mainly to this uh, okay. government. Okay, what's your, what's your assessment? Is, 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 is this, in your assessment... The most polarized, ugly communal election, or is it pretty 
less polarized, not so ugly, least communal, in your view, sir? No, no, listen to me. In, you know, as we say, in love and war, everything is fair. In the same way in elections also, so many things keep on coming. You know, we, we uh, you know, bother our left foot about what uh, Salman Khurshid's, uh, you know, that uh, uh, relative said about Muslims, those Muslims who uh, actually are with BJP and with RSS, unka hukka pani ban kar rahe, we care a fig about it. Nothing of that kind. Now, this kind of rotten stuff is coming from these sides. Of course, you know, as far as uh, Prime Minister is concerned, he did take the name of Muslims. But these things are part and parcel of uh, election. And as far as Prime Minister Modi is concerned, he is a very well-meaning people for Muslims. Because according to his mantra, I want to see a computer and a Quran in one hand. I think Muslims should have been after him. Ke, Come on, give us computer, give us laptop. Okay, all right. Modi actually is the most popular leader. Just two more seconds. He is the most popular world leader among Muslim countries, whether it is UAE, whether it is Saudi Arabia, it is Qatar, any country. So, you know, he has become, uh, you know, numero uno leader, okay. not only in Muslim countries, all over the world. All of them accept them like uh, uh, John F. Kennedy or any other American president. So okay. Modi has gone a step ahead of these people. Okay, it's a painful progress. It's a painful progress. Uh, in the end, uh, the people who lead countries are the people who bring together, people together. Uh, those are the people who lead countries. Narendra Modi has led the country for 10 years. Uh, there is no iota of evidence to indicate, let alone prove, that all the worst rumours that were peddled about him uh, of what will happen has taken place. Nothing. Okay? Millions of Muslims will lose their citizenship. There will be genocide, we were being told, on the streets of India, of Hindu nationalist fascism taking over. We are, we are being told, we are still being told that it's about to happen. None of that has happened. Okay? Uh, you have seen development. Yes, the country needs a lot more, lot more to be done. But in the end, uh, it have to be a prime minister who talks and walks when he says sabka saath, sabka vikas. So let me get in Professor Nalpat back into this. So we got a few minutes left uh, before, of course, we listen in uh, to the prime minister speaking. Professor Nalapat, now then 10 years later, okay, we've had this conversation, you and I, 10 years ago, we're having it again. 10 years later, surely the excitement of the freshness and the hope uh, of a Narendra Modi, hope, surely that has faded. That there is a reinvention that is required. Uh, for, for, the people, for the people who are fatigued with the uh, uh, excitement, is this something different or is the best yet to come or the maximum yet to come? Rishabh, for 10 years, the Prime Minister has worked very hard to ensure the, the first five years was basically clearing the debris of the past. The next five years was, has been building the infrastructure for the future. And that is, uh, this has been a time when you're seeing the fiscal deficit come down. And the last budget you saw, the last budget pre by the, presented before the election by the finance minister, there was no cut in taxes. All this discipline has been done in order for the next five years to be a period of double-digit growth. And for that, there is a roadmap, there is a plan. And that's a plan that will benefit all of India. So the, the point is, whom do people believe will be better for them for the next five years? And if you look at the record, for example, you look at the record of, of some of the parties that are contesting the elections, they're talking about uh, all kinds of situations. But when they were in power, they forgot all that. You know, they forgot that completely. So, uh, okay. so, uh, part, uh, so this is the point. The point is the future. And for the future, we must have a double-digit growth. And the question is, who can best lead that growth? Prime Minister Modi, over 10 years, has built the infrastructure for that. And therefore, he's asking for five years to ensure that the country enters stable, double-digit growth. Okay. And you still think there's momentum, um, momentum for that? Atharjiya wants to make a point. Atharjiya, go ahead. Uh, Rishabh, what I wanted to say that, you know, India got partitioned just because of the fear we are instilled. And now also the fear uh, uh, should not be there, whether to the Muslims or Hindus. You know, 
Chandrababu Naidu just said today only that 4% reservation for the Muslims. And the Prime Minister is taking and working hard for everybody. And the development, the progress, the double-digit growth, the economic growth is being shared by everybody, irrespective of religion. But the fear uh, among some Muslims that this will happen, that will happen. And same way uh, in the majority, that Muslim population will grow a lot and this and that. Our Muslim share in the wealth and assets of the country. You know, they should be told that Muslims, they have hardly 3-4% assets. I mean, share in everything. everything. Yeah, one at a time, sir. I'll come to you. Let him finish. Yeah. Let him finish. Yeah. So, so fear should that not... Yeah. Fear should not be there. Okay, so let me ask you the question. Uh, let's be, be let me ask you, Atar Zia, is it tempting? Is it tempting? Nobody Even if it's, a, if it's a promise, uh, is it Allah tempting when somebody Muslim says Muslim quota? Firozi, Firozi, one second, one second, one second. Atar Zia, is it tempting? Would that tempt voters? Quota promises? Yeah, I couldn't hear you, but I'm saying I'm not in favor of any quota. Religion-based okay. quota. All right, okay. What I am okay. saying is... Let me put what the same. What I'm saying yes. is that 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 the fact should be portrayed and it should be publicized. I among I, the I, I agree. We need to have more reasonable conversation in this country, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Aurangzeb did nasty things. Then we know the Nazis in Germany did nasty things. Uh, sorry to say that uh, some of the Crusaders uh, did very nasty things uh, as well. Uh, nasty things happened in the past. To simply live in denial and pretend they and, and pretend they never happened is is is, is 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 a problem. So let me let me quick go back. Uh, Feroz ji, quota promises for minorities is is that a is that a, 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 a sales space that they don't you vote us to power we'll scrap this fifty percent quota we'll come up with extra quotas and and that's why you should vote for us. Are you are you a buyer into that? Uh, look here, Rishabh, this is a very good and sensitive question. As far as quotas and reservations are concerned, they have divided India. All these quotas and reservations, I think they make no sense because uh, if a person is meritorious, once I had uh, this debate with uh, A.R. Antule who was actually, uh, you no, know, the, the quota should be on economic criteria. Yeah, yeah, just let him finish, let him finish, let him finish, let him finish. Let him finish. Let him finish. Let him finish. Yes. Let yes, yes, let him let finish. Me yes, go ahead. Just bear with me, please. You are a good brother. I was having this uh, tatata with the uh, um, A.R. and Tule. I said, you have been Bharat Law. You have been the Chief Minister of uh, Maharashtra. You have been the Minister in the Centre. Did you take any quota? He said, no. So I said, why are you going for quotas for Jamia Millia Islamia and other universities? Let these Muslim kids are very bright and brilliant. They actually should not bank upon quotas. Because quotas, if they are religious, they are not going to be working anymore. Someone from BJP, from okay. Sun will go to a court of law. Okay, okay. So you're not a buyer. You're not a buyer. Okay, you're not a buyer. Just 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 stay with me. Kapil ji is joining us. He's also a member of Yogi Ji's cabinet. Kapil ji. Uh, Iqbal Ansari, two-time Babri litigant, has just put a poster outside his house. He says he's Modi ka parivar. Your reaction, sir? Ji, yeah, Mr. Iqbal Ansari, the uh, three hoarding, uh, it, it is a house for Modi campaign. It is very good uh, because the Muslims are liking to name Modi schemes. Name Modi, the national working program, and uh, yani ke... Agarwal ji, jo Babri, do PD tak jinhone Babri ka case uh, uh, lada, unke jinke pita shri ne marte dam tak Babri ka case lada, kya aapko aur aapki koshish jari hai ki agar aap unka vishwas jeet sakte ho, to aur logo aur musulman logo ka is desh mein uttar pradesh mein vishwas jeetne jeetne ki koshish aapki jari hai? देखिए विश्वास मुस्लिम को करना चाहिए प्रधानमंत्री जी ने उत्तर प्रदेश के मुख्यमंत्री योगी आदित्यनाथ जी ने ऐसा कोई भी काम नहीं किया जो कहीं मुस्लिम की भावनाओं को आहत करता हो वर्गों का सम्मान किया हर क्षेत्र में सम्मान किया जो आवश्यकताएं जो देश की मूलभूत आवश्यकताएं वो बराबर उसे चाहे हिंदू हो चाहे मुस्लिम हो सबको मिलने काम हुआ उनकी बेटियां डॉक्टर बननी है साइंटिस्ट बननी है वैज्ञानिक बननी है प्रोफेसर बननी है कॉलेज जाती है प्रधानमंत्री श्रमिक का था एक हाथ में कुरान और एक हाथ में लैपटॉप या कंप्यूटर तो ये सब चीजें जिसके कारण से अगर उन्होंने ऐसा किया है कि अपने घर पे पोस्टर लगाया है okay. और उनका परिवार मोदी के साथ है 
तो मुझको लगता है उसका संदेश दूर तक जाएगा और जो मुस्लिम अभी जातियों में धर्म में या कुछ मौलियों के बहकाए में आकर के कहीं ना कहीं बीजेपी के खिलाफ बोलते हैं तो मुझको लगता है उस समझ आना चाहिए कि देश सबके संयुक्त राष्ट्र प्रयास से आगे बढ़ेगा जिसके लिए मोदी लगातार प्रयास कर रहे ओके अग्रवाल जी हमारे साथ जुड़ने के लिए बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद लेटली क्विकली गेट बैक मिस्टर वेंकट नारायण इन टू दिस मिस्टर वेंकट नारायण इन द वेरी एसेंस सीकिंग वोट्स इन द नेम ऑफ अ राम मंदिर एंड लॉर्ड राम इन दैट वेरी एसेंस इज दैट हिंदू नेशनलिज्म पोलराइजेशन मेजोरिटेरियनिज्म वेल पर से यस आई डोंट थिंक वन शुड सीक वोट्स ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ रिलीजन आई हैव सम रिजर्वेशन अबाउट दैट the fact is that 80% of the population here happens to be hindu and the prime minister happens to be hindu and he happens to be the primary lead responsible for making the temple happen in ayodhya so uh, you know in a situation like that use of politics uh, become uh, religion becomes uh, inevitable rishab but i have uh, two important things to say one is that the prime minister should consider leading an effort to raise donations to build a mosque for muslims near ayodhya mm-hmm. that will be a laudable thing and the time has now come after 75 years of independence that we should put an end to quota system reservations and we should encourage merit to flourish that's going to be uh, a long debate my, that's going to be a long uh, debate i've been having it for 20 years uh, i know in the country has been going on for 80 years not an easy one that is uh, but uh, not not expected to happen in it any time shortly i think venkat ji is is espousing uh, a dream once espoused 80 years ago uh, hopefully we'll get there ladies and gentlemen uh, of course uh, that's the, it's a good aspiration to have but not any time soon okay uh, as we speak let me quickly get major shah back into this conversation Ma- major shah it has to be done bit by bit it's not going to happen overnight uh, it is uh, and there is going to be pain along the way uh, fortunately or unfortunately but we are roughly halfway through this election cycle you've seen many election cycles uh, in your lifetime is it seem seeming to be at least a more goal oriented positive election cycle i know you're unhappy with a few commentary that's been made other people are unhappy as well but are you seeing a, a better atmosphere in election cycle rather than a tense riot riotous uh, stressed out communal atmosphere uh rishab yes most certainly uh, my own sister she is standing up for the lok sabha elections from uh, bengal and bengal has been uh, very very there has been there have been very very violent elections in bengal in fact so more but uh, i have i was there recently i, I went to give her some emotional support and i am finding this time thankfully the environment is peaceful no doubt and uh, so the she's been really really uh, voraciously speaking against the tmc and again mamta banerji and uh, a whole lot of things that uh, that, that happened in bengal normally was the elections in bengal have been very very violent so i have just returned from there a few days back so most certainly i am expecting a much more peaceful election this time a uh, fair and square election this time mm-hmm. and whatever uh, the election results may be as you mentioned earlier let's not talk about numbers and whoever whichever party irrespective whoever wins should be honored by the entire nation we one should not uh, go by oh i accept this party i was voting for this party this party didn't win irrespective okay irrespective of which you know yes yes okay sure. okay for for the record uh, uh, that saira shah alim uh, uh, she is uh, contesting on the cpim ticket from kolkata south uh, as as we speak okay utpal call okay but why not uh, i mean uh, you and i don't have uh, uh, you know uh, uh, sticks in the game so are we are we seeing a momentum halfway through building here okay because the first one first phase i've got to admit i don't know about you was a bit confusing didn't didn't really know what happened there you could see a little bit of polarization creeping in uh, into the second phase uh, here we are third phase coming up in in two days time almost halfway through the election how do you see it going uh rishab i think uh, uh, indian voter is very wise they have they uh, have they have decided uh, one month back two months back who to vote so uh, 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 because i was actually uh, following each constituency and because it is my uh, i have great interest in it and uh, i see uh, 
mm. that uh, things are very uh, smooth because I have seen what was happening when we had ballot papers. And uh, uh, the big problem in, uh, in Bihar, in Uttar Pradesh, in the certain areas, there was a, a kind of a Gunda Raj during uh, elections, and that is missing this time. It is uh, more uh, peaceful. But at the same time, I have concern for one thing, that is youth have not come in large number to vote. Okay. Uh, 18 years above, it is uh, only uh, 40% or 38 percent, we have to make it sure that they understand the value of vote. And so, because future, uh, for future of India, okay. our youth is the uh, future. Okay, Venkat Naranji, let's translate this into hard politics. So, how, how do you think it's shaping up now? Uh, the, the poll battles in Tamil Nadu are closed, in Kerala are closed, in Karnataka are uh, half done. Uh, so, where do you think this is headed now? Well, you see, people of India have been voting uh, since 1952. So there doesn't have to be too much of drama every time an Indian voter goes to the polling booth to exercise the franchise. Uh, I believe the time has now come, Rishab, to make voting compulsory so that it's not just 60-odd percent of the people who vote, but 100 percent, like in Australia. I think... Uh, this is uh, my desire and dream. I hope it will happen sooner than later. Okay. Um, I think uh, it is uh, one of the most peaceful elections uh, in the history of this country. Fingers there crossed. No, you know, uh, you know, no violence and no booth capturing of the kind that used to exist before electronic voting machines uh, were introduced in this country. I'm absolutely confident that the results uh, will be, uh, you know, also not dramatic in the sense most people know what is likely to happen. So we don't have to look for okay, drama. But, but, but stick, yeah. your, stick your neck out, sir. I, I do see the BJP sort of replicating the 2019 figures, around about 300, 290. Have you seen them a bit down, a bit up? Well, you know, th there have been uh, reports, Rishab, if you have noticed, that uh, the average uh, RSS volunteer in villages is a bit disappointed that the BJP has been less than judicious in uh, accepting people to join the party from the Congress and other parties whom they have blamed for corruption and so on. So there hasn't been that much enthusiasm of RSS workers going to, uh, you know, voters and bringing them to the polling booths. And that could be one of the reasons why there has been a drop in the, the voting percentage. The other thing is the Satta Bazaar is now talking about the BJP getting 290. It doesn't really matter to me so long as a single party gets a majority and forms a stable government. Okay. 272, you get a, you know, a majority of your own, 290 is good, and then you have India partners, nearly 40 okay. you know, parties. So it's very clear that... Uh, Mr. Modi is going to get a third okay. term. All right. Okay. Let me put the same question so. to Utpal Call. Utpal Call, how is this translating into the reality of politics? It's it's a good conversation to have, but where do you see it going? Uh, I think uh, BJP under the leadership of Narendra Modi ji will have absolute majority, and uh, I think uh, it will be nearly 300. And if we uh, if uh, we talk of NDA, uh, it may touch. Uh, 325 to 350, that is my uh, figure. And uh, I, I have seen it, uh, one big change this time is that uh, urban voter has come. Educated people have come. Uh, Middle-aged have come. Older people have come to vote. That is a very important thing. If you see in what happened in Delhi NCR, Delhi NCR, 60 uh, percent voting was there and most of them were not young people. They were middle class educated people and people from high rise buildings. There's a 80 percent voting there. Okay, uh, okay. And, but, uh, in yeah, overall numbers, ladies and gentlemen, have been slightly below uh, the first phase. Uh, well, slightly below 5-6 percent is, is, is a chunk below uh, where it should be. Uh, you want them higher, not lower. You can argue who that favours. Uh, in our drawing rooms, uh, literally till till the till the morning of the fourth. Uh, when you do, please join us because we'll be doing the elections uh, live countdown. Okay, uh, we've had a larger conversation on on how this matters. Okay, 
uh, we've had a larger conversation on complex and volatile subjects that are very difficult to have reasonable and rational conversations on, including Hindus and Muslims and fears and aspirations and hopes and dreams uh, and communalism. Uh, so now let me just, uh, uh, just touch upon this and let me touch upon this with Professor Nalapath. Professor Nalapath, on the overall, as we wind down on this uh, Ayodhya rally, in terms of the performance of a yogi Adityanath in not directly, but let's not kid ourselves in an ancillary capacity, ensuring that the temple got built, that uh, the large numbers of people are infrastructurally provided for, that there is a, a neat administration there. Of course, many things need to get done. What do you make of Yogi Adityanath, uh, the person who was up until a few years ago only known as the seer of Amat? Well, uh, from the reports that I'm getting, I'm told law and order has improved significantly. Uh, under Yogi Adityanath, and that's a very welcome sign because law and order is important for economic development. The point is Rishabh polling percentage, and my view is if a polling percentage is high, it will favor the BJP. If a polling percentage is, is not high, it is going to create a problem because there is no question about it. Let us be open and honest about it. The Congress is back to creating vote banks, and so are some other parties, and to an extent, by misinterpreting and by you know, signaling, for example, signaling something about reservation that the Home Minister never made, but which, is, which, is, which is then went viral, which is a completely uh, a doctored, artificially uh, made uh, uh, sound bite of this. So by that kind of tactic, they are ensuring that there has been some uh, effort at consolidation of traditional vote banks. Now, at the same time, there is also a large number of people who want economic development, and they know very well that only Narendra Modi can give them that, that double-digit growth. Okay. So the question is polling percentage. If it goes significantly above 60%, then I think uh, Mr. Call's assessment will be absolutely accurate. So I'm going to look at the polling percentages very, very closely. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, uh, before we wind up this conversation and, and take a break, I want to take the opportunity of just getting to you a lot of the people who we spoke to on the ground because it is so fundamentally important. And I know these are only dipstick tests. They are only anecdotal examples. Uh, we can't really do uh, beyond perception on issues. We can't, of course, uh, be showing you any, any exit poll or opinion poll kind of surveys right now. Uh, so the dipstick tests of speaking to the people on the ground really help us understand what people are saying, what people are showing up, what do they think. Not everything they say in front of a camera will be exactly what they, they think or intend. But you see a, a, lo a lot of understanding of what is going on. In Ayodhya, it's a game changer. From the radiwala to the shopkeeper to the hotel owner to the visitors coming in from all over India, they are not complaining about disaster and mismanagement and chaos and pandemonium and Baghdad and stampede. Uh, it's a carnival atmosphere four months later. Records are being broken in visitor numbers, uh, about to become uh, or has already become in daily numbers, will become so sure shortly in annual numbers, the most visited religious tourist destination uh, in the world. Uh, and you're seeing an election under progress uh, in a sort of a carnival atmosphere, despite the rough and tumble of uh, the high stakes uh, that are happening. And you're seeing a highly energetic prime minister, of course. Uh, I, I mean, I'm half his age, uh, so I, I, I don't know where he gets it from. Good on him. Uh, good uh, good uh, message to set up in Indian politics. Uh, and for young people uh, aspiring uh, uh, in their careers, at least... Uh, and of course, he's uh, campaigning in other parts of the country, including Bhubaneswar, after after uh, Ayodhya. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.